Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching, to the way in Dynamics, and we're going to solve problem 13.26, okay? It says that 1.5 megagrams sport car has a tractive force of F equals to 4.5 kilonewtons. If it produces the velocity described by the VT graph, shown, plot the air resistance R versus T for this time period, okay? So over here, under our problem statement, they're giving a two key important parts and the first one is that we have our car we're being told that this car is experiencing this air resistance r force and we're also having our force which the one the it's our tractive force okay now at the bottom we're given our velocity graph with respect to time and we're told what's the equation for this velocity okay now we have that uh, the time limit is until 30 seconds and our velocity at that time is equal to 45, okay? So in order to start this problem, what I'll always, always like to do is write out my givens. So I write my givens by the problem statement. And what do I have? Well, I am given first the mass of my sports car. So I'm going to put MC for my mass of the car. And it's equal to 1.5 megagrams, okay? And I'm going to convert this into kilograms because it's the units associated with newtons, which is forces. So if we convert from megagrams to kilograms, what we need to do is just multiply our number by a thousand and therefore we get 1500, okay? After that, we're also given our force and this force is equal to 4.5 kilo newtons. Since we're going to work in newtons, I'm going to convert this kilonewtons to newtons and it should be equal to 4,500 newtons. Then what else do I have? Well, I'm given our velocity equation. So we know that our velocity in terms of time is equal to negative 0.05 t squared plus 3t. Okay. And this is in meters per second. Now, they're asking us to find the air resistance R, okay? So what can we do? So what we're going to do is that we're going to utilize the summatory of forces, so summatory of forces in the X direction in order to find our, uh, our force R, our air resistance R, okay? So since our main goal is to do the summatory of forces, what do you guys think we are going to do? Well, we're going to do free body diagramming here. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of our car. And we're going to simulate that our car is just this square shaping here, just to keep things simple. So boom, we have our car. Let me move it more to the center. And what forces do we have? Well, first we have our resistance for that the one that we're trying to find. So we got our force R we have our tractive force, F, that is given by the problem. So we got F going to the left. We got the weight of the car produced by the mass. So I'm going to call it the weight of the car. And then we have the normal force of this car. Well, the normal force should be going up in order to counter our weight. And if we pay attention into our figure, our normal force should be in our tire. So we will have two normal forces, okay? I have normal force uh, of our car and we'll have a normal force of our car in here for two tires, okay? So this is how our free body diagram looks like and we perform our summatory of forces in the x direction. This should be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the x direction. I like to assume that going to the right is positive so what do we have? Well, we have positive R, which is going to the right. Then we have negative F, which should be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the X direction, okay? So now we have our equation in here. We do know how much is F, we know how much is our mass, but we don't know how much this acceleration is. But we know how much the velocity is. So if we know the velocity in terms of time, we can compute the derivative because we know that our acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity divided by um, with respect to the, the uh, change in time. So if we know that we need to do the derivative with respect to time 
of our negative 0.05 t squared plus 3t, okay? Now that we have this, we perform our derivative and we will know that this is equal to negative 0.10t plus 3. And the unit should be in meter per second square. Now, we know that this acceleration is according to the direction of our car. And our car is going to the left. Therefore, since I'm assuming going to the right is positive, this acceleration, I need to put it in negative values. So when I am plugging it back into our equation, okay? So now I'm going to have that R minus our force F, which is equal to 4,500 Newtons, has to be equal to the mass, which is equal to 1,500, multiplied by this acceleration. But remember, remember, this acceleration is going left. Therefore, I'm going to have a multiplication of negative acceleration. All right, so I added this negative because it's going to the left again. And if we solve for R, we will have R is equal to, then we'll have the 1500 multiplied by, let's distribute this negative sign to both terms. So we will have positive 0.10t minus 3 multiplied by our 1500. And we're passing our 4500 to the other side. So we get positive 4500. We're going to keep solving for R. If we multiply our 1500 times our 0 0.10, we'll get 150T minus. And if we multiply our 1500 times 3, we'll get negative 4500. We add our 4500. And as we can see, these two terms will cancel out. Therefore, our air resistance force is equal to 150 T. Okay, so we just found our force is 150 T and the problem is asking us to plot or graph our resistance, air resistance. So we're going to plot this equation. We're going to have in our y value, we're going to have our value of air resistance in force, meaning in newtons. And on our x-axis, we're going to have time in seconds. And as we can see, this equation is just a linear equation that starts at zero because the y-intercept is a zero. So our equation should look something similar to this. Okay. And in the time interval given, we need to stop at 30 seconds. So if we find out what our Y value happens at 30 seconds, so we have to compute R of 30 seconds is equal to 150 times 30. And this should be equal to 4,500, okay? So therefore, my value in the y direction is 4,500 at this specific point, okay? So this is the final answer for this problem. If you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.